We're going to do um, two quick parts of a reading lesson today. Um, the first part is we're still going to be using our same story, Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon, because good readers um, read stories over and over again. They look at different parts. They try and understand the text more every time they read it um, or every time they look at a page. Um, so we're going to ask us, ask ourselves a question, how can we better understand this story? What are some things that we can do to better understand all the things about this story? Well, one thing you can do is to ask and answer questions. You can ask yourself questions and you can answer them as you find the answer or as you read. So anytime you read a story, whether you've read it once, whether you've never read it before at all, or whether you've read it a thousand times, you can always ask yourself questions. And we ask ourselves questions before we read, during reading, while we're reading, and then after we're finished reading, we can ask and answer questions any of those times, before, during, or after reading. So if I had never read this book before, um, I could have lots of questions before I read. Um, I could look at the cover and try and pr make a prediction, like, what? what is this story even about? Um, I could ask, who's Molly Lou Mellon? It's probably her, because she's on the cover. Um, if I flip through pictures, I might be like, oh no, what happened? What happened on this page? I wonder um, why all the dishes fell. And then as I read, I would answer my question. So we've read this book before, so I could still ask some questions. Um, before I read, but um, let's ask some questions while I'm reading. So if I wanted to better understand this story, um, I might start on this first page where it says, um, Molly Lou Millen stood just taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in the first grade. Um, I might wonder, um, gosh, how would I feel if I was the shortest person? in my grade level, or how would I feel if my dog was, um, or just a little bit shorter than me, how would that make me feel? Um, but then grandma tells her to walk proudly and that the world will look up to you. And um, I might ask, gosh, I, that's so hard. I wonder how she does that. How does she um, walk so proudly? And then I could keep reading and I might be like, well, it, it, it seems that she's pretty confident in herself. I mean, it doesn't really seem to bother her that she's short. Um, it might bother me because I let things bother me more easily, but Molly Lou Mellon is, is pretty confident in herself. Um, so I could keep going. I don't have to ask a question on every page. I might just ask a question um, as I'm going through. Oh gosh, I'm going to skip that page because um, Miss Stratton can be fumble fingered sometimes too. Um, on this page, I might ask a question and be like, hmm, I wonder why they had to move. I wonder why they had to move. Now, it doesn't it doesn't answer that question in the story, but I could infer, I could guess. Um, I could do all kinds of things, but um, how's she feeling? How's she feeling when she's, when she's moving? I know she's confident. I know she likes herself, but if I put myself in that situation, how, how would I feel if I had to leave everybody? that I love. Now, she had to leave her grandma. Her grandma is the one that gives her all this advice. So how, how is grandma going to give her advice now? Um, but what she does is she remembers. She remembers all that advice that grandma gave her. I might ask a question like, why is Ronald Durkin so mean to her? Like, why? Why is he so mean? Is he going to be mean the whole time? And then if I keep reading, then I, I, know, I know the answer. He's not mean the whole time. <laughs> And then at the end, I can be like, well, no wonder, no wonder grandma gave her all of this advice because her, her cat, I think that's a cat, yeah, her cat's bigger than her. So grandma knew exactly what she was talking about because grandma had experience. And so at the end, I might be like, well, I wonder what it was like for grandma growing up. And um, I bet that's why she wrote all these things to or told all these things to Molly Lou Mellon about how to um, be proud of herself and how to be brave because she experienced it. She's kind of the same as our main character. 
Um, so they don't have to be any kind of specific questions. A lot of questions that you're going to ask when you read are going to be, I wonder, um, like, I wonder why, or I wonder if, or um, a lot of it's going to be what's going to happen next if I've never read the text before. And, and you know, some of your questions aren't going to be answered um, in the words. Some of them might be answered in the pictures. Some of them might not be answered at all, and um, you have to infer or you have to just think on your own, use your own independent brain and, and think of the answer for yourself. Um, sometimes if it's a series, a book in a series, you might have to read the next book to find the answer. Um, so when you're reading, be sure to ask as many questions as you can uh, to help you better understand that text. That's what good readers do. I mean, good readers don't just read a book one time and like, oh, okay, that's cool, but bye. Like, you know, if, if they didn't love the book, they might not pick it up and read it again. But you can ask yourself all these questions to help you um, better understand what you're reading and better retell. And you'll just become a better reader the more questions that you ask. So um, you can pause the video and take a break if you want. We're going to move into our next section. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is our Edmentum lesson today um, has some sections that are labeled grammar at the top of the green box. Um, you can skip those today because we're going to do it in the video. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing the grammar sections, just the grammar sections, do all the other ones. But in Edmentum, in the parts where it says grammar, um, you can skip those because you can just watch this video and we're going to do um, this part together. So in those grammar sections, it talks about those verbs, those action words. Remember when we talked about our story, how characters have action? It's the things that they do, and that's a verb. A verb is something that you can do, like swim, run, hop, jump. If it's something that you can do, it's a verb. Um, so we're going to talk about base words, which is what the verb is by itself, and then endings. You can add endings to words to change the meaning of the word. So let's write those two up here. Let's see if it, what's a good space. So we have base words. Those are um, the, the verbs, the base word. And then we have endings. And endings can change the meaning of the word. So, for example, um, I'm just going to pick a, a verb. I'm going to pick jump. Um, what would you do if I said jump? Jump jump. I guess you, you could call it hop too, but we're going to use jump. So our base word, our verb is jump. I can add an ending to that word to change when this happens. So for example, if someone is doing it right now, I could say they're jumping and I would add that ending ing. And that whole word together with the base word and the ending would be jumping. Here's your base word, jump, and your ending, ing, changes the meaning of that word. Um, jumping, they are jumping right now. You are jumping right now. If you want to, show me. You are jumping right now. Ms. Stratton is jumping up and down. I'm doing it right now. I'm jumping. Um, if I change the ending... Kept the same base word, but changed the ending to ed. My word would be jumped. Now this, this ed ending changes it to past tense. That means it's already happened. So I could use this in a sentence and say, I jumped a few seconds ago. I jumped. I already did it. I jumped. So you can add those endings ed, ing. You could also add just an s. And then that word would be jumps. Like he jumps um, on the playground. So you can take any verb, any verb, and you can add an ending to it. And it changes the meaning of, of the verb. It changes when it's happening, um, and it changes maybe who is doing it. So let's try it with another one. I'm going to write the three endings. We're going to try and read the word. We'll read the base word, and then we'll read it with each ending. And I'll write the word so you can read it. So you can add an S. You can add an ED. 
we can add an ing and I'll put a dash mark there because those are just chunks of letters they're not really words so let's use look so we're going to use the word look so this is the base word look that's the word the base word the verb <laughs> did you see that let's add each ending and read each new word so we have three new words using the base word and adding the endings. You can see them all here. So look is our base word. And then if we add an S, we get looks. If we add an ED, we get looked. If we add an ING, we get looking. So look, looks, looked and looking. So you can use that base word to help you read new words. When you add endings, look for those base words. It's the same word, look, look, look. But it's looks, looked, and looking, all with that base word, look. Now, um, not every base word, not every verb, you're gonna use the same endings. Like for example, um, another way to say look is see. I can say sees and seeing, but if I want to talk about how I did it already, I, if it happened in the past, I wouldn't say seed. I wouldn't say I seed it yesterday. I would say I saw. So sometimes the word changes, but we're just worried about the words that you can take the base word and just add the endings to. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see. We did jump. We did look. Swim would have to change. Run would have to change um, the ending. Man, I can't think of one. Okay, we'll see if this works. Let's see if our computer magic can work. Shout out a verb, any verb, something you can do, anything. <laughs> ah, I heard one. If this, if you, if you really said this, then man, I'm impressed. Wash. Now wash. Um, we have to add an ES. Sometimes you have to add an ES instead of just an S. But let's read wash with the three endings that we can add to our base words. I thought of wash because I think about how many times a day I wash my hands. <laughs> I'm sure you wash your hands a lot too. So the base word wash we add an ES, an ED, and an ING, we get three different words that mean different things. Washes, washed, washing. So we know our endings. We know base words that we can add those endings to. So you use those endings or you use the base word to read the new words when you add the ending to them. Now remember this ED changes it to the past. It's, it's already happened. It happened. Huh? Happened already. It's already happened in the past. So um, practice with some verbs um, and see if it, if it changes the meaning. See what kind of sentences you can use with those base words and the endings. And um, have fun practicing with verbs as base words and then adding endings to the end to help you read new words.